Ladies and gentlemen, we are the team The Legacy of Wilson and we represent the Immaculata Institute de Pone from Belgium. In this project we participate with a working prototype of Wilson's cloud chamber. Radioactivity is a complex team to bring home at first of its abstractness. So a model to visualize it is always a good option to make it more feasible. By preference, one that doesn't require any radioactive sources but interacts with the background radiation all around us. This becomes even more complicated if you bear in mind that radioactivity itself is invisible and has only visible consequences. So, our group aimed to make a, a model that would function for this one. These conditions are met by Wilson's cloud chamber, a revolutionary design for its time. But who was Wilson? Charles Thompson Rees Wilson was a British physicist who discovered and built the first prototype of a cloud chamber. This year, it has been exactly 100 years since he succeeded in visualizing electrons for the first time. Inspired by this aim and available information, we began the construction of our own model. But how does it actually work? When a charged particle derived from the background radiation flies through saturated alcohol vapor, it leaves a string of ionized atoms behind. The vapor condenses directly on those ions, thus visualizing the particle's path. In order to prove this theory with small charges of subatomic particles, we used 98% alcohol with a high evaporation rate. To create the oversaturated vapor, an effective cooling up to minus 40 degrees was crucial. Here, we used Peltier elements that while working on semiconductors, heat one of the sides and cool the other. Two elements were combined into one single cell where the cold side of one element cools the hot side of the other, allowing the last to work more efficiently in order to diminish the effective temperature, ultimately creating the required temperature. The parasitic heat is diverted and divided by two aluminium coolers. These were grind for optimal contact surface. The casing containing the elements was constructed using a 3D printer. The lights were fitted to visualize the vapor traces optimally. However, the trace is specific to each particle and is possible to determine them after some careful analysis. Let's see some examples. We see a tiny trace of an electron released during a beta decay, an example of which is given in the top left corner. The actual electron itself is indicated by a blue dot. Unfortunately, the neutrino also produced as a result is too small to detect with our equipment. And now the alpha decay. As you can see, the trace is thicker and shorter, which can be attributed to the fact that the helium nucleus released in this decay has a larger mass than an electron and therefore stops its movement faster. An example reaction is also given here, with the alpha particle in the far right. Thus, Wilson's cloud chamber, invented 100 years ago, makes it possible to view the background radiation and the elementary particles all around us. Ruben and I really enjoy the making of this project, and I suppose that it will be a valuable asset for the school's physics equipment.